thank you for clicking on the video welcome back to the channel this is another episode for the thing about Pam episode 4 <sighs> Pam and her kids are out for her mother's birthday they're out eating dinner mama is mean <laughs> she is mean and surly and she is dealing with dementia so she's really mean um, we flash back to 77. I want to say it was 77 when Pam was a teenager. We see she done lost her virgin. Well, she ain't, I don't think she was no virgin, but she was out there pretending to be, <laughs> pretending to be a little schoolgirl, talking to her friends or whatever. But her mom, I'm assuming was a teacher at her school. Her mama come out there drunk, <laughs> being mean and all of that. And of course, Pam, you know, they have that little spar with words. I don't want to say spar because it wasn't. Wasn't nothing serious, but you know that mother daughter tension. Um, you already know what it gives. It's very nice, nasty. Um, and she going on in her car, have sex with this dude, and end up pregnant. <laughs> um, we see that she's a teenage mama, and um, she's she's mean to her daughter and emotionally abusive to her, cause the little girl come up to her. Um, she had had an accident and she, she politely, you know, takes the, pulls the little girl's panties down, um, you know, and takes them and puts them on her head and tells her if she keeps it up, if she, you know, keeps up that crying, keeps it up, it's going to be worse next time. I was like, you just going to put the dirty pee panties on her head? That's terrible. That is terrible. Anyway, she pour out the milk and say, babe, I need some money for milk. Pouring it out. We're out of milk. Ain't out of no milk. Now you out of milk. You know, poured it down the drain. She just wanted a reason to get out the house. Listen, I feel like <laughs> I I understood. I understood that that whole. I just need some kind of reason to leave this place. <laughs> I need some kind of reason to go to the store. Like, listen, I'm finna go and get stickers or something. I got to go and get some some straws. We need some we need some napkins or something. <laughs> I got to have me a Target run at you know it. In those moments where you where you do where you are feeling overwhelmed, but she just wanted to get away. Um, we see that um, she goes out for the milk, but she ends up at the bar, and she sees this guy at the bar that she's interested in, and he's he's with a girl. But when she sees the girl go to the bathroom, she politely pushes this barrel in front of the bathroom door so the girl can't get out, and she goes and sits at the bar and slides right on in. And um, ends up having a baby, baby number two with him. Now we, now it's 1989, and they're at the pool. She's still being mean, <laughs> still being mean to her kids, mainly to her daughter. You know, she she got a favorite. I think her son is her favorite. She got that whole it's that mother daughter thing with them, generational. It's really bad. You know the pathology of it all. Uh, we flip back to present day, and grandma still mean <laughs> she's telling a story about Pam and how you know she treats her son better and all of that um Russ we flip we, we keep flipping back and forth right now now we now we with Russ over there in prison he been in there two years um Dateline drops in to go see Pam and the lady kind of alludes to Russ getting a retrial so of course she's like a retrial I thought I was I thought I was rid rid of him so, you know, of course, now she want to get in front of it. She kind of give, and that was like a little warning. You may want to get in front of the story. <laughs> that lady ain't sleep. That lady know that Pam did it too. Russ is meeting with um, Joel Lacey Slater and his partner. And um, the girls, they're suing Pam now, you know, for their trust money. And he's going to use some of what was in the disposition in the new trial. And they filed a Mooney motion and it worked. And so now they're going to get a, it's kind of going to be like a um, a bench trial because the judge is going to be one judge. There's no jury, none of that. Um, so we can be excited about that. It's a bench hearing. Russ has to agree to it though. And he agrees. So it's a go. Pam, she goes to, to DA Leah and um, they talk about the retrial. And instead <laughs> she, you know, She's kind of met with what she said in that disposition. And, of course, again, she don't remember. I don't remember. I said that. I don't remember saying that. And Leah's just like, you said it, girl. <laughs> you definitely said it. You know, and so now here we are again. 
<laughs> um, when Pam leaves, Leah's assistant, you know, she comes in and wants clarification on whether or not she should file some documents or something like that. They should have been filed a long time ago. They Some tests weren't ran, all of this. Just shoddy police work <laughs> across the board. We already know that. And um, the assistant is like, do you want me to, you know, test this against yeah, against Russ and anybody else. She's like, why would we test it against anybody else? Russ is our guy. Because you have to test it against somebody other than him to rule it out. She's just so incompetent. It's really... <laughs> anyway, Pam is at home talking to her husband. Um, they done blew through half of Betsy's insurance, you know, they and they're still behind on the mortgage. I just don't even understand. She worried about Dateline and what they got to say and them being back and, you know, all of this is being drudged up again. Um, and, of course, she's curious about what they know and what they don't know. What do they have on me? Do they have something on me? What they talking about me for? That's, that's, that's Pam's whole thing. She's paranoid now. Betsy's mother, she's about to do an interview with Dateline. And um, she already know that they there <laughs> to poke holes in the story because Dateline is on Russ's side, honestly. If they had to choose a side, I feel like Dateline, the, the interviewer, however, or the producer, she wasn't buying it either. Um, and it's just like how she she feels like how how could how could Pam be the person when she's so she's such a good friend, she's such a good person. She's just been there. She's been there. And it's like Again, y'all are not noticing how involved in this case she is. Cause yeah, you would you would want to know uh, what happened to your friend, and you would want justice for your friend, and you would you know maybe work closely with the defense team. But all always up in the precinct asking the police what's happening. Yeah, something is something is up about that. And even if you go into the prosecution, as much as she does, they need to be looking at her. And again, they they just do not get it. Pam is at the police station pointing, pointing, <laughs> painting a new picture. Cause they're all like, we've heard, I mean, we've heard what you had to say before. Like, I don't think that you could give us anything new. She got something new. She started talking about Betsy and how Bet she and Betsy were <laughs> romantically involved. Betsy was in love with her. Betsy, she and Betsy had a sexual relationship you know, it, it was all Betsy's idea. Betsy was the one that started to fall in love and that just wanted to have sex. It was just sexual. They're not lesbians or anything. It was just a sexual thing they had. The assistant looking like, you buying this? You believe it? <laughs> and Leah's like, hmm, really? Well, okay. <laughs> and then... I think there's another, I think the detective was in there as well. And he, yeah, detect, the clown, clown detective. He, he on, he hanging on every word, hanging on every word. And it's just, again, a shit show. Everybody's incompetent. Everybody except for Joel Lacey Slater and his partner and assistant. The assistant girl, she's smart. <laughs> she's smart. She's starting to, starting to pick up on the fact that these people are not doing a good job at their job. Um... Anyway, once she leaves, the assistant is like, so finally we can be done with her and all her stories. And Leah dumbass is like, you know what? It, I, it might still prove motive. You know, I think she, I think we I think we got rust. It's like, no, no, you don't, girl. What? This pokes holes in like y'all. She's just dumb. She is dumb. It's just really laughable, honestly. Um. They talk about this, the email again, and how it never was brought into evidence. And Leah's talking about why? <laughs> Cause there wasn't no email. Like she just threw a story out there, and they didn't, they didn't look into it. They didn't investigate it or anything like that. It was just out there. So now, so now all of a sudden, you know, we have to figure out where it is, and 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 and, and they need to, you know, get it into evidence. <sighs> anyway, um. They send over the letter 
that was supposedly from Betsy's computer. It's a lie. You know, Joel Lacey Slater going to get on it. He calls his people that's going to get in, you know, and look into the laptop or look into the computer. Um, They're going to investigate themselves. You know, they listen because these people is playing around. Pam, she is about to go see her mother. You know, her mama had an accident. Her mom's in the home. And her mama is mean as hell still. <laughs> it's like, you, you would think she would be nicer. But she is not. She is just really not. Um, we see Pam with her daughter. Because it's like, it don't the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Grandma mean, mama mean, and here come the daughter. And she hopefully she ain't going to be mean to her daughter when she has one. But her daughter wanted to get into flipping houses. And, you know, Pam is, you know, trying to uh, throw a little salt on it. You know, you don't really have the money for that. You guys, you and your husband don't really have the money for it. It's really not a, not really your thing. Like, she's really mean. <laughs> she's really mean. She tears her down. She puts her down. She's, she's just mean. And her daughter is at an auction right now trying to bid on a property. And so is Pam. Pam back there trying to outbid her. It's like, you're just going to steal the house right from under her. And that's exactly what she did. And then looked at her like, <laughs> oh, she going to run you down with a car. <laughs> um. Anyway, Russ is meeting with Joel Lacey Slater and, and, and his partner. You know, they now have the luminol photos. And what do they see? Plenty of photos. Plenty of clear pictures that show no blood evidence at all. So he obviously didn't clean up no blood, like they said. There was no blood on him to begin with. So it's just like, it was a lie. The police lied, like we knew they did. Retrial. And so Leah and Joel, they give their opening statements. Pam, she feeling herself again. She feel like she going she gonna to get in here and do the same thing she did last time. You know, she just feels like she just got it all figured out. She coming in there with a huge, with a big old smile on her face, going into the room with the rest of the witnesses. Oh, I'm back again, back to do my just do, girl. You going to jail? <laughs> you going to jail? The first witness is is Detective Clown, and Joel drags him. I mean, drags him on the stand, and it's like one by one, he just contradicting every little detail these people thought they had. Um, when the other clown detective gets up there. We asked, he asked about the luminol photos again, and the detective was like, oh, yeah, no, I wasn't nothing on there. He slapped them down. So look through them. It's it's about, how many of them was? It's 130 pictures. So the camera was not broken. Um, what do you see? Oh, I see a scene. Is that nothing? <laughs> it's very much something. So it's something. And so, yeah, that, that that's a lie we done caught y'all in. Joel then calls the expert witness who talks about the email that was supposedly left on the computer. That was a lie, because who created the email? Where was it created at? It wasn't created on Betsy's computer. It was created on another computer and then copied over there on Betsy's computer. <laughs> so again, that was a lie. Um, call your next witness, DA Leah. And so the next witness should be, um, what's the face? It should be Pam. But she's sitting there thinking, because if she calls Pam, it's going to be really bad because that cross-examination ain't going to be, <laughs> it ain't going to be nothing to play with. Um, so she just says, um, the prosecution rests. And of course, we ask the defense. Partners say we should go on and call Pam because we could get that ass and it'll really be a sealed deal. It'll be a done deal. But he thinks about it and he stands up and he says that the defense rests as well. He's like, we don't need her shaking the table. Because <laughs> she'll come in here and have and sway everybody. Because for whatever reason, she got the gift of gab. Them people just be believing her. Um, Pam, excuse me, she waiting on her turn. She, you know, pacing the floor like, what the world? What the world? Why they ain't call me yet? They ain't about to call you, girl. <laughs> they are not about to call you. So, the judge finds him not guilty. Thank you, Lord. Not guilty. You know, you know his family was all excited. Um, Mariah even was, was excited. She had a big smile on her face. Now, Mariah's sister still feel like daddy did it. But um, I think Mariah know exactly who killed her mama. Because she's side-eyeing Pam at this point. 
bam, bam, leaving out of there. Like she, all she had to do was call me to the stand. Why didn't she do it, girl? She blew it. <laughs> she blew it. Um. Anyway, Joel drops by DA Leah's office, you know, and offers what evidence he has. Like, if you want to reopen the case. I got the evidence over here. You can come look through it. She's like, why would I do that? We had the right guy. We had the right guy. Thanks, but no thanks. You did not have the right guy. <laughs> when he leaves, he notices that the assistant has the same type of folder that the letter was dropped off in. And so he already knows that the assistant is a smart one around there. And she's the one breaking the case. And he, he asks her, are you happy working for her? And she's like... I work for the county. It, it really don't even matter who name on the door. And he's just like, they're lucky to have you around here because, listen, justice would not be served without you. <laughs> the people, they would just be sending people up the river, all innocent people every single day. But thank God we got you. Thank God we got you. Um, Leah, she gets on the phone and calls the sheriff's office and then tells them to destroy all of the evidence on, the, on Betsy's case, including the evidence log. Again, is this, Legal. Joel, he giving his interview with Dateline, dragging Pam in front of the world. So Pam's name is out there and that, that, that suspicion is now over her head. And so there's that, Pam. How you like that? Because that's what you just said. That's what you did to, to Paul Russ. Um, Pam is having dinner with her mom. And mama, mama's a drinker. She want another gin on the rocks. Pam, of course, is giving her pushback. You know, they they had they always going back and forth. Mama says she just gonna cut her off, and that that is something she shouldn't shouldn't have said. Cause the minute she said that she was gonna cut that girl off, now it's a problem. Now she got a now now it's a real problem, and mama's life is in danger. Um, when they get back to Pam's house. She fixes her mama a drink and she fixes her, I mean, pours it to the brim with gin. <laughs> I don't know if she mixed it with, you know, gin. it was like a gin and tonic or what, but um, it was to the brim and she brought her mama to drink. You know, you're so good to me. Thank you, girl. You're so good to me. She leaned her head on her daughter. I said, ma'am, that was your last drink. That was your last, you should have never told that girl you was cutting her off financially because that's your last drink. And sure enough, she leave telling the nurse, oh, she's asleep. Don't even worry about it. She'll, she won't be down for dinner. She won't be up for breakfast either. You know, she's just tired. I would go at about noon. <laughs> and then we see these kids out because it's Halloween. They out trick-or-treating, running down the street. And they stumble on mama dead on the curb. Dead on the curb. I mean, sprawled out, dead. It looks like she's fallen from her balcony. Y'all already know that lady killed her mama. And I want to say that that's what did her in. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that that's what really did her in. <laughs> them, 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 them figuring out that she is the cause of her mother's death. And then, you know, or they found out about Betsy first and then the mama. I can't, I can't remember, but <sighs> she ain't getting away with it. <laughs> she is not getting away with it. Anyway, that's the end, guys. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busty, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.